folks and welcome back to Fishing with Den. Well this time, it's such a nice day, I thought I'd come out and show you how to tie up a pole rig. And this isn't going to be anything complicated, this is designed for the beginner level, uh, just to show you how it all works and how it all fits together. So this is what I'm talking about then. Uh, pole winders already made up with floats on them, attached to the line and with the shots already done, and ready to go basically, just to clip onto the end of a pole, uh, tie a hook on and start fishing. So now let's talk about what size of float we're going to be looking at. Now you wouldn't want to be using something like this. This is four grams, it's huge, and it's designed for a completely different situation. What we're talking about here is something more like this. This is 0 0.4 of a gram, and really as a rule of thumb, what you're looking for is if you've got four feet of water, you use 0 0.01 of a gram to accommodate the depth. So this is four feet deep, that's a 0.4 of a gram float, so that's what we're going to use. Now, it's quite bright out there today, so you can probably see me squinting, so I'm going to use a black top float, but you could just as easily use a yellow one. And that's why you have different rigs all made up in your box. So the next thing we need to look at is what sort of fish are we going to be catching? Well, today I'm going for carp. They could be up over £10. A lot of them are in the smaller range, but we have to cope with that. So there's no point in using really light line, so I'm going to use some of this, it's called 019 power line, made by Preston. All sorts of different lines to use, I just happen to like this one. Um, this one, I say 019, that's 0.19 millimetres, um, which is normally referred to in the UK as 019. Technically it breaks at £7 just over, <coughs> just over. Um, but I find it's good line and so that's what I'm going to use. Okay, so first things first then, I'm going to just cut off the end of the line just in case it's got any flat spots and it'll just make it easier to thread through the float. Now all floats generally have a little eye on them at the top and I'm going to thread this through the eye. Okay, I'm going to pull off a bit of line to give myself some room. Now just under here of course we've got these silicon rubbers. One, two. Now they come in a container. I happen to have this one, but there's all sorts of different containers containing different diameters of silicon rubbers. Make sure you get these clear silicon ones because they work really well. Now obviously as I said there's all sorts of different sizes, so this one is on, it's just big enough to fit and slide. You don't want it to be a sloppy fit so it just slides up and down, that's no good whatsoever. So, let's put the first one on, there we go, just wet the float a bit, put this on and just move it up to about an inch from the bottom of the float. Then I'm going to take the second one, now if you're a match angler you'll probably use three of these, but frankly for all the difference it makes for a person that's just starting out, I wouldn't worry about having three. Like I say, let's keep things uncomplicated and easy to use. So this one then goes on the bottom and fits on so it's just, just sticking out a little bit over the back of there. Now the reason we put this one on here is if you had it right up next to the float, when a fish pulls on the line it puts a big mark in the float and that's no good to you. So pull it down about an inch or so and that's it. So now the next thing then is to put some shot on. So this is my shot box then, it's filled with a mixture of non-toxic uh, tungsten shot and some Stotts shot. Now I'll show you the difference between the two of those in a moment, but basically I'm going to start putting these on the line. Now again, if you're a match angler, this is 0.4 of a gram, and 0.4 of a gram would take something like eight number eight shots. Okay, again, that can be spread out down the line or it can be bulked or whatever, but we're not going to be complicated today. So I'm just going to use two or three number sixes and keep it really simple. Now my number sixes happen to be these, I don't know if you can see them, stops shot. I'll probably put a, a little thing in the corner for you so you can see them a bit better. But I'm going to put them on just below the float and I'm going to put four of them on because that's a roundabout what this is going to take. A Number six shot is 0.1 of a gram, so 
if I put four of these on, we should be looking at round about the right sort of amount of shot to use. And apologies for talking while I'm doing this. Okay. So that's got four of them on. Now normally I'd do all of my making up of these uh, things at home and I'd have a float tube full of water and I'd just dunk this in. Now because I've come down here to do this today, it's a great excuse of course, but I'm just going to dunk it in the water and set it up on that way. So there we are then, as you can see from that, um, it's actually sitting a little bit high in the water. So we'll just put a little bit more shot on until we've got the thing shotted down. So there we go then folks, I've added two number eights to the rig and that's now shotted the float right down to the tip of the, the black. And that gives me about probably less than a centimetre showing, which is really what you want. So that's the rig put together then folks. Um, all we've got to do now is get the length of line correct and also spread out the shot and put a hook on. So because I know it's four feet deep, I'm going to set this to around that sort of depth, like so. And I'm going to spread this shot up the line a little bit. Now be careful when you're moving shot. Try and get your line wet so you can uh, not damage it. Now I'm going to pull up these shots so that they're closer together up here. Now, what I find is if you're going to damage line with shot, you tend to damage it in the first part of the movement. So what I do is I discard this last part here. I'll just move these two down, which I forgot, sorry. There we go. So now, lose this part of the line where the shots were and tie a figure of eight knot. If you don't know how to tie a figure of eight knot, then I've got various videos which help me to do that. Now I'm just doing it by hand. Always wet the knot. And of course, the other thing I've almost forgot to show you was put something like this in. You could use a disgorger, pull the knot tight, and then just take off the tag end. Doing it with your teeth isn't necessarily recommended, but that's the way I do it. So now what I've got is the rig more or less ready to go. I'm going to pull this number eight shot further down here to the top of the loop. I'm going to have this other one about probably four or five inches away from it. And then I'm going to move the bulk shot further up here. So there we go. Okay. So that's it. So what we've got is a bulk shot. As I say, if you're a matchman, you probably have a load of number eights there, or even something even smaller than that. We've got two dropper shots, which are number eights. This, of course, is number sixes. And we've got the loop to which we'll be tying the hook. About sort of four feet away, we've got the float. So now all we have to do is to make the rig long enough to work. Now, of course, there's no point in making the rig humongously long but I always try and give myself that bit extra, as you see here. And again, I'll tie a figure of eight knot at this end, like so. As I say, you can always use a loop tire if you want to, not a problem, just wet it and tighten it up. Take off the tag end. And now, as you can see, there's the float, slightly tangled up, there we go, there's the float. Down the line, as we said, a bulk shot and two droppers. So pretty much that's all there is to setting up a uh, pole rig. So of course, that's where a, a pole rig tying video usually stops. But I'm going to go a bit further today and show you how to attach it to the pole and just trim it all up. So we've taken the end above the float with the loop. This is my pole with the connector, pull back the cover on the connector, push it in, and lock it down. Now, if we take this up through here, there we go. Now, as you can see, it does fit almost to the end of the pole. That's not quite right, and it will need some slight adjustments, but before we do anything else, let's just put a hook on. So this is my hook length, size 14 hook tied to a loop and it's about six inches long. 
Now again, what they tend not to tell you half the time on the pole fishing videos is that this is a slightly lower braking strain than the main line. That means that if I do get snagged up or broken off or whatever, I only lose this part and I can very quickly tie another one on. So that's 019 and this is 017. So this probably breaks at about a pound or so less, breaking at something like six pounds or so. And again, I've got videos on all of these things, so feel free to, to go into the channel and have a look. But what you do is you take the loop there and take it through the loop of the hook and then take the hook and push it through the mainline loop again and just dress it down so it becomes tight. Now, if you do it the other way around, it probably doesn't make that much difference. Uh, I'm not totally convinced it does, but technically this is a stronger way of doing it than putting it through the other way around. So that's it. That's where we're at. We're more or less ready to go. But as you can see, this currently sort of comes down past the end of the pole. And also, from the top of the pole here, we've got probably something like, I don't know, over a metre of line sort of thing from the pole tip. Now that's no good, but before I shorten all this down, I'm going to plumb the depth. Again, there is a video on how to plumb the depth, so I'm not going into any detail at all on that today. Um, all of these uh, videos will be in the description box below, and there'll also be some suggested videos coming up along the top as we go along. Well, I've plumbed the depth, and I've actually got sort of three, three and a half feet or so, and so I've had to pull the float down even further. And what that's done, I take this back, this line to the top of the pole now is probably four or five feet long. You can't have that much, otherwise you've got no control. You're really going to have the wind blowing this line all over the place, and it's going to take you forever to, to actually connect with a fish. So, what we do is we just take off... I give yourself, initially, about two feet of line, which is about um, 60 centimetres. Tie yourself another figure of eight knot, as you see there. Take off the existing loop. There we go. Put your new loop onto the connector. Push that down and now just There you go, and pull the knot tight. So, I'll just get rid of this, this line, put it in my pocket for now. Okay, so now we've got that amount of line to the uh, float, and then we've got the depth, and I've still got the plummet attached, so if I take that off, there we go, and then I'm gonna hook it onto the end of the pole. Now, at the moment, before I do that actually, there's the pole end, take it up there, and you can see it's quite a distance from the tip section there, but that's fine, you can still reach that, and the elastic will come out to accommodate. The final thing I have to do is get some of this Tipex liquid paper, correction fluid, whatever you want to call it, and just mark on your pole exactly where that float is. Then, if for some reason the float moves, it shouldn't do, but let's say you get pushed through some weeds or something, some reeds, it could move, you always know where to go back to. And if you change your hook length, that's the exact depth there. So, we'll get some bait on. In this case, I'm going to use a single piece of sweet corn. And now we can start fishing. Now, just going back to this top part again. Once you get more into this, this section from the top to the float, I've got a couple of feet there. I often fish with quite a lot less than that and you'll see match anglers fishing with sort of this much. It just makes it a more direct strike but it does lead to complications. When you ship out this thing is jumping around and bouncing around the end of the pole and you just get tangled so try and stick to 18 inches, two feet to start with. Shorten it as your experience grows. Let's get this thing out there and catch some fish. And that's the other reason I'm here today, folks. It's not really to do the video, so we can have a day out fishing. Okay, so we're going to ship out nice and gentle. As you see, if I waggle the pole around, that float is sufficiently far away from the tip not to tangle. 
if it was really short, like six inches, that sort of thing would be tangling it all over the place. It makes it very difficult. As I say, as you get more used to it, you can go to a shorter length. Generally for me, I think about 18 inches, which is about 45 centimeters, is probably a good average. But see how you go. If you need it a little bit longer, that's okay. If you can make it shorter, that's even better. But just go with what you can do. For some reason this guy's decided to fight right in my baited area, which wasn't so good, but nevertheless, not all that big. Oh, goldfish. Very much like a crucian. There we go. Well, that's the first one for you. Just goes to show the pole rig that I make up does work. <laughs> Unusual fight. All kind of lollopy. <laughs> Normally they take off. It could well do that in a minute. They've been known to do that in the past where they suddenly wake up and disappear on you. There we go. See what I mean? He's hardly fighting this one. Not complaining though. Decent fish. <laughs> well he woke up in the net didn't he? <laughs> oh dear me. Kind of expected that folks. I think he was half asleep, this guy. There we go. That's better. He's a good fish actually too. There we go, that's the third fish of the day on this rig. So, it does seem to be working, folks. Not a huge fish, but it's unhooked himself as well. Well, folks, as you can see, I've started to catch a few now, and I'm going to continue on and uh, have the rest of the day to myself and uh, catch a few more fish, hopefully. At least the rig works, and it seems to work really well, so... I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned plenty. Um, if you're interested in pole fishing, uh, in a second or two there'll be a, a suggested videos banner pops up somewhere which will take you to a, a playlist I've produced which covers all forms of uh, pole fishing. It's not complete yet, but I will be putting more and more videos into that over the course of time. So, as we say, that's the end of the tutorial. If you liked it, click the button. If you want to subscribe, you can do that too. And until the next time, bye for now.